Hold on to your butts. These are the Squashbuckler Diaries. Welcome back. My name is Guy Hasson, and you are listening to the Squash Buckler Diaries. And almost every time I tell you this, the the breadth of this thing, this short daily podcast uh, that appears to be about small, small things is so big. The scope of this is so huge. We are talking about a whole life of a person of Joy Shelley, the girl who lives in her father's dreams, about what it's like to be born into the dream, uh, how she was born into the dream, which we'll get to, uh, what happens when she finds out she's actually in the dream and can and that can, she can visit other dreams, um, the secrets of the dream, her life, her heroic life, uh, as she gets to be a teenager and an adult, and hopefully an middle-aged woman and an old woman uh we'll have to see how far she gets and all this will be covered in a daily way in of of her life being uh, detailed and blogged about meanwhile the big pieces of her life the big dramatic changes of her life will be in books so season one of the squash buckler podcast is her ages two to six and then we get a book where we find out what happens at age six when she finds out she's in the dream and, and her entire world changes. And then the squad season two will be about her from ages six to nine after she found out she's in the dream, what that life is about. And at age nine, another big thing is going to happen in a book. And then Squash Bucket of Diaries season three, nine to 12 and so on and so on and so on and so on. And you'll see her grow up and you can see Right now, the seeds of the personality of the heroine, of the woman, of the teenager, who will do amazing things. And this is what makes her up. So, episode 42 of season one. Drink the boat. Joy's age four, told by the red dragon. As soon as the Scorpion Queen was defeated, four-year-old Dragon Little grabbed her stomach and threw up. Joy, Dragon Father, whirled around and held her. Simultaneously, all villains vanished, and they were standing in the empty hallway. Joy, what's wrong? Her stomach convulsed, and she threw up again. Dragon Father put his hand on Dragon Little's forehead and exhaled. I am not sure what he was checking, but he seemed to not find what he was looking for. He held her close, her back to him. It's okay, it's okay, let it out. When you're finished, you'll feel better. He was looking around at the palace as if to see if something caused it. The sun's lights came from the glass ceilings, burning hot as only the suns in the desert can burn. Suns is plural, that was not a mistake. What's the matter? Did you eat something? Did a snake bite you? Are you sick? Joy shook her head, wiping her mouth. What's sick? Have you never been sick? He thought about it for a second. No, you haven't. Okay, never mind. He shook his head. He looked around again. The suns, we're in the desert. Did you drink enough? She nodded. Show me your bottle. Her bottle was attached to the sword belt. It was full. Joy, if you don't drink, you get dehydrated. And in the desert, you get a sunstroke. He looked up right at my hiding place far above him. Well, sunstroke, he whispered. He sighed. Feeling better? My head hurts, my body hurts, she said matter-of-factly, for my dragon little did not whine, not even as a child. Okay, come on, drink this. I'm not thirsty. Part of having a sunstroke is not being thirsty. You have to drink it to be thirsty. Dragon little sunk to the floor and lay there, curled up. I'm not thirsty. Dragonfather's voice was rising. He no doubt remembered how he could never get her to do anything she didn't want to do. Joy, drink it now. You'll feel better. She shook her head. If you don't, you'll feel worse. She shook her head again. 
Dragonfather started pacing back and forth, growing more frustrated. He truly was never able to convince Dragon Little to do anything she did not want to do. Okay, okay, look at this, Joy. This is amazing. Dragon Little looked up. He was holding a huge bottle of water in the shape of Bunny's Revenge, the pirate ship. It had the mast, the wheel, Dragon Little's cabin. All the details were there, except that it was see-through and full of water. And you can drink it. Come on. Joy smiled and sat up. She reached for the bottle, opened the end near the bowsprit, and began to drink. Dragonfather sighed and sat down next to her. Good, good. Drink up. He was calming down. He had reached her and saved her. Told by the Red Dragon. Tags. Joy. Sickness. Justin. The Scorpion Queen. So, as we can see, it's quite dangerous to be in the dream. There are two suns above, which we'll get into at some point. Uh, it is dangerous. She has to drink. And more than that, she has to drink when he's not there. Because... If you think about it, he's not, he's there like eight hours max, like seven, six, depends on how much sleep he gets. And the rest of the day, she's alone. So this girl has to learn to cope by herself. And also, as you can see, she's learned not to whine, even when she feels bad and throws up and is completely dehydrated and has a sunstroke. So we've learned something about joy. Again, today, and tomorrow, we learn something else. So join us tomorrow in the next episode called I Feel a Song Coming On. Who knows what's in it? Who knows? Not me. Maybe you. Not me. Anyway, and now, the credits. The Squash Buckler Diaries are written and read by me, Guy Hassan. If you want to know more about the Squash Buckler Diaries, check out the website, GuyHasson.com, which is G-U-Y-H-A-S-S-O-N.com. The theme music is called Brash Gentleman and is by Thomas Herodek. I will talk to you again tomorrow in the dream. <coughs> ah okay, sorry about that. to her sword her bottle was attached her bottle was attached at, wow dragonfather signed signed he didn't sign he sighed